She's back at her hotel and feels guilty about the situation. And there is further conversation to be had. I do feel a little angry and sad and upset, but I'm also still processing because I never thought something like this would happen in my relationship. Welcome to the hallowed halls of Magic's monologue. I'm Magic, your curator of personal growth and the sage keeper of the keys to today's tome of wisdom and knowledge. Today's episode, my wife just called a few minutes ago to tell me she let another guy kiss her during a night out on vacation with the girls. But before embarking on an expedition through the vast collection of life's lessons and bad choices, demonstrate your eagerness with a thumbs up, subscribe, and smack that bell like a victory bell signaling success to become a patron of wisdom. So stow your baggage of doubts, grab a ticket to success, and let's enjoy this ride together. My wife, female 26, just called me, male 26, a few minutes ago to tell me she let another guy kiss her during a night out on vacation. How would you react? We have been together for 10 years and married for two. She is currently on vacation with two of her friends, both female. Slap to the back of the head. When you are married, there is no girls only vacation, especially if her friends are single. Time and time again, history has proven that this is a bad idea. Vacations are taken with your wife or husband. Sure, guys taking a fishing or hunting trip for a weekend and should be open for your wife to join if she chooses. But a week-long vacation on a tropical beach? Uh, no. When you both said, I do, you gave up acting single. Stop worrying about being told you're controlling. As a man, it's your job to lead, set boundaries, and maintain them. She just called me a few minutes ago, very upset and crying, but also drunk. She explained she let another guy kiss her and that it was just a peck. She said that she couldn't keep anything from me and how she loved me and our relationship. She said she told the guy it meant nothing to her and that she was happily married. I tried to calm her down and say she doesn't need to cry or get worked up over it and she felt like I was just saying that so she wouldn't be more upset than she already is, which is partially true. I told her regardless now that it's not the time to talk about this since she is drunk and it likely wouldn't be productive conversation. She's back at the hotel and feels guilty about the situation and there is further conversation to be had. I do feel a little angry and sad and upset, but I'm also still processing because I never thought something like this would happen in my relationship. I love her very much and she is my life partner, but I can't help but feel a little betrayed and like the trust has been broken. Slap to the back of the head. She's your wife, not your partner. Stop it with the gynocentric indoctrination crap. She has your number. You're one of those nice guys who can be easily manipulated. I bet you're the kind of guy who believes in happy wife, happy life, huh? Newsflash, that's a fallacy. That sets you up to be repeatedly manipulated over time. Then one day, you wake up and wonder, 
where the hell did my balls go? And you are now a card-carrying simp. By the way, I can tell you the number of times I've heard this phrase from husbands who've been indoctrinated into the happy wife, happy life, simp mindset, and the phrase is, I never thought something like this would happen in my relationship. You need to watch my video, The Simp Trap, How Happy Wife, Happy Life Kills Relationships. The fact you are having a tough time accepting it could be okay to feel betrayed tells me, over time, you failed multiple crap tests with her. You didn't just get here overnight. Incidentally, I believe a happy spouse, a happy house, which means she is just as accountable to seeing to your needs as you are as to hers. I don't want to be upset because it probably didn't mean anything, but I'm still in shock and pretty upset. Slap to the back of the head. It means everything. To quote one of my favorite book characters, Evan Smoke, aka The Nowhere Man, how you do anything is how you do everything. How you got here is very important. Over time, I bet she committed tiny acts of disrespect and you wanted to please her so much that you either didn't see it or let it go when she acted out in some way. Eventually, she escalated to the point where you were convinced to let her go run off with her girlfriends who I'm willing to bet are single or carousel riders or divorce themselves. Guys, look at your woman's friend's value systems. She and you are an average of your five closest friends. If her friends are single, divorced, blue-haired, tattooed, nose-wearing female empowerment ideologues, then she is influenced by them. Get this lesson through your heads. You will have a problem down the road. How should I approach this conversation later when she's sober? Yes, here it is. What to expect. First off, if you do not see you are being manipulated, you're a fool. Most likely, she's calling to get ahead of the narrative in case someone outs her. There is a principle of manipulation where people will confess to the least sin to relieve themselves of the guilt they feel in doing something worse. I'm sure it was a far more than a peck. It's highly likely far more happened and you're being what is called trickle-truthed. She called you to tell you what she did and follow up with her crying and hysterical begging for forgiveness to the point where you predictably sought to comfort her instead of holding her accountable and allowing you to deal with your anger. Dude, wake up. She's manipulating you. Think about this. Why was she even in a situation like this where she could be flirting with other men? It takes conscious effort and a series of steps to get there. It doesn't just happen. No matter what, you can't expect her not to take any accountability for her outcomes. After she has sobered up, she needs to write down everything that happened in chronological order. Now pay attention. If she resists, cries, and says, you don't love me or trust me, she is resorting to manipulation, and you can safely assume she effed the dude. Stand strong. Say nothing. Offer no comfort, no response, 
no drama since she's counting on that. If she continues to try and manipulate you because you taught her she can, then you need to tell her to get out and go spend a few days with some of her friends. Meanwhile, change the locks, secure the accounts, and immediately seek a divorce attorney. At this juncture, she's never going to be honest with you and she will do it again. Now, if she does comply, immediately cross-reference with her friends without telling her. Ask them what they saw in their own words and do not give them any hints of what you might or might not know. Talk to your attorney about recording it so they can't lie afterward. If later stories change, it should mean divorce. Now, if you're one of those forgiving guys, I think you're stupid. But at this point, have your lawyer draw up a post-nut <laughs> Freudian slip. Have your lawyer draw up a post-nup agreement, which makes it financially painful for her to do this again. Also, have your attorney recommend a marriage counselor who doesn't have blue hair, tattoos, a nose ring. Chances are, when she thinks it's safe a year or more down the road, and you are under her emotional thumb once again, she'll do it again. Only next time, she'll be smarter and more devious about it. One last thing. Make a list of every excuse she gives you, starting with, I was drunk. Trust me, she'll most likely start with that one. If you found value in this video, please show it by doing three things. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit this bell, and share this with at least three friends who really need to learn from this channel. If you didn't like this video, then I thank you for watching this long and for stopping by, and I suggest you check out my other videos and find something you do like. Send me your personal stories to share, or if you see an article online you think I should cover, send the link to stories at magicsmonologue.com. This way others can learn from your victories, joys, and defeats as we work to not only support each other, but to help each other become better men. This is the best way to help grow this channel and support me. If you have a moment, stop by my YouTube community tab and check out my occasional memes and vote on my surveys or subscribe to my locals, Rumble, Twitter, Getter, and Gab. In doing so, you are certainly helping to educate other men and have a better life. Until next time. Thank you for watching. Before you run off, check out these other videos, give them a thumbs up, a comment. This support helps me make more content.